In today's wrap-up, an Armenian factory begins producing Kalashnikov rifles. The PM spokeswoman has responded to Aliyev's comments on the Karabakh conflict. Greece has ratified the EU-Armenia SEPA agreement. Half a billion drums worth of financial support will be provided to families with children. And 535 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed. An Armenian factory has begun producing Kalashnikov rifles. Run by a company called Natron, the Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan visited the plant as it's set to begin producing around 50,000 rifles a year. The factory got the go-ahead to produce the Russian weapon after an agreement with a Russian arms manufacturer and the Natron company. The agreement is for a period of 10 years. The rifles will be supplied to the Armenian armed forces and will also be sold and exported abroad. This will be a major boost for the armed forces, which use the Kalashnikov rifle as a primary weapon for their infantry. In 2019, an investigation by Sivonets Mikhail Kirtich Karapetyan shed light on the main manager and producer of the Kalashnikov rifles in Armenia, David Galstian. Galstian has been involved in arms exports to Libya, which is currently facing an arms embargo due to a civil war. He was therefore mentioned in a report by the UN Security Council and is also involved in offshore accounts owned by former Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko. Maneke Vorkyan, the spokeswoman of the Armenian Prime Minister, has responded to comments made by Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. Aliyev grilled the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs and mediators for stating that there is no military resolution to the conflict and also called the previous round of peace talks pointless. Gevorkyan also lambasted claims Aliyev made that Armenians were not mentioned in a treaty from the early 1800s. She reiterated that there are countless sources from ancient Greek to Ottoman scholars which spoke of Armenians and the land of Armenia for centuries. Gevorkyan also responded to Aliyev's remarks on a possible military solution stating that if that is the case, then the victory of Armenian and Karabakh forces in the early 90s resolved that issue. Greece is the latest country to ratify the Armenia-EU SEPA agreement. The motion passed the Greek parliament with only the Communist Party of Greece opposing. The agreement seeks to boost trade, economic and social cooperation between Armenia and the EU. The agreement was signed in 2017 and needs the ratification of every member of the EU to go into force. It is also seen by many as a stepping stone on the way to visa liberalization. The national parliaments of Portugal and Spain remain the only legislators to not have ratified. Deputy Prime Minister Tigran Avignon has announced that financial support worth around half a billion drums or $1 million will be provided to families with children. He stated that the funds will come from the 2020 state budget. The assistance will be provided for mortgage loan repayments and purchasing a residence. The amount of financial assistance will depend on the amount of children in the family, the age of the parents, as well as the cost of the property they wish to purchase. 535 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed, raising the total number of cases to 29,820. 520 recoveries were also reported and 18 more deaths, raising the death toll to 521. Deputy Prime Minister Tigran Avignan also announced that people with chronic diseases will no longer be required to wear masks in public. They will, however, need to carry medical documents. Moreover, an outbreak of COVID-19 has occurred at a nursing home in Gyumri. 55 residents of the home have tested positive for the virus. Civilnet's Mark Dovich wrote a piece about the increases of public trust in state institutions shown by the Caucasus Barometer more than two years after the 2018 revolution. According to the 2020 survey, any given institution experienced an average increase in public trust of nearly 16 percentage points. Five institutions saw increases in public trust of more than 15 percentage points between 2017 and 2020, including local government, the police, the president, executive government and the National Assembly. This trust was expressed for the banking system, the court system and political parties.